Studio 17's here? No freaking way. <laughs> Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's me, your boy Malik, the Pinnacle Studio Pro, and I'm bringing you the review of Pinnacle Studio 17. Let's get into it. Ooh wee! Here it is, people. Pinnacle Studio 17. Now I'm gonna be breaking down the differences between Pinnacle Studio 16 and 17, and I'm also just gonna give you the full review of the software. So you know it's gonna take a hot minute for me to get into this and get it done, but let's get it cracking. All right, first and foremost, you notice that the interface is very similar to before, except it's, you know, a little bit more blocky. It used to be a little bit more rounded corners and stuff. Now they got little sharp corners on everything. You know, try to, you know, give it that sharp feel, give it that real sharpness. Now, first thing that I noticed that was different that instead of having like a library tab, they changed the name to organize. Instead of having a movie tab, they changed the name to edit. And instead of having the disc tab, they changed the name to author, like, you know, authoring. And then also they still got the export tab, but they went ahead and took the import feature off of the file menu and put it here as a, as a, tab well it's still on the file menu but they added it here as well so you know just giving you easier access to importing things without having to go to the file menu so speaking of the freaking file menu let's take a look at it if you go to file basically this is the same as before so you got your new movie or new disc you can open your projects you can open recent projects you can save a movie that you're currently making. You can save a movie for the first time by using Save Movie As and give it a name to save it as. Uh, you can save movie as a package, which means that you're going to be saving all of the files along with the uh, the destination of the uh, files that are used in the movie. So basically you're saving everything. Uh, you can create a disc project from a movie. You can close your freaking movie and open a new one, which is pretty cool. Um, you can import previous projects from previous versions of Studio. And you can import your Studio for iPad projects here. There's your import, quick import, export, and burn disk image. And then just shut them down. Shut them, shut them down. Quit Pinnacle Studio. All right. So there's your file. Then you got your edit menu. This is pretty simple. You got undo, cut, copy, and paste. You know, just give you some functionality to do some things within the, within the software. You got your setup. So this is where you set up everything how you want it. So if you go to control panel here, the first thing you'll see is you got your watch folders. So the watch folders are the locations where uh, Pinnacle will add things to the organize tab so that you don't have to go pull them from locations off your computer all the time. They're basically going to be all set up and ready for you to go. I can remove this or I can change it to something different. I can do whatever I want to. If I remove it, I can add it back as a new location for my fo for my photos, videos, whatever. So it's a great way for you to be able to have all of your media organized automatically when you open up the software. It knows where to look and it knows where it's at. So for audio device, right now you can see that I got my uh, Avid M Audio producer microphone and see this hooked up. So if I want to go ahead and do some um, narration or voiceovers or whatever, it sees it. It knows where it's going to be grabbing my audio from. Got your event log. There are no events. I've done nothing, and nothing should be here. Better not be. I'll smack this software. Then you got your import settings. So it'll tell you where you're going to import things from. So you got your audio directory. So if I want to import some new stuff, this is going to try to look at these locations first for my default locations for scene detection. Alrighty then. 
you want to go ahead and grab you some keyboard shortcuts this is the place to be right here you can go ahead and create keyboard shortcuts it already has them in here but if you want to create some of your own you can utilizing this it's a great function to go ahead and create some crazy shortcuts for you to be able to use within the software you got preview so this is going to tell you how to set up your preview quality you can look at mine right here so if you're going to ask me you know hey buddy your stuff renders real fast well this is how i get it to render as fast as i do i go to the preview setting and my control panel and i have quality set on fastest playback and then i have my optimization threshold right now set on 60. so it's pretty fast pretty funky i love it like this when i go ahead and change to my uh, full screen preview it jumps over to my second monitor because i have it set up to go there project settings so i always want to do ntsc widescreen that's what i like i want my stuff to be widescreen and i want it to be set up to the american standard you could choose different ones you want to do uh 24p you want to be 30p at 1280 by 720 all type of different settings in here for you to choose from you got your default durations for your titles transitions and your still photos and then you got ruler zooming storage locations all right so when you're working in pinnacle studio this will tell you where you're going to store the uh projects auxiliary files render files all that good stuff so if you want to pick a location besides the default locations where it saves your projects or your 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 movie projects or your disc projects where the titles that you save were uh saved at the menus that you save to save that uh your restore projects all of that good stuff your render files all of this you can go ahead and choose the location from the default location yourself and have your things stored where you want them to be stored and that's it for the control panel baby we're done with that it's good it's been a good day on the control panel it's been a really 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 good day all right let's get back to the interface a little bit because i want to talk to you about a few little things on here so some of the things that have changed on here is that you got this group by setting here. now the group by setting was already available within the uh different text but now it's right here on top of your media then you also have your sort by so you can sort by different settings if you add tags to your clips or ratings to your clips because you can add tags or ratings so that you can find things by that criteria as well as just the name or the location of the clips or what have you so let's take a look at the organize tab real quick people if i go over to the organize tab you'll see that it has all of my media here on the left hand side so remember when i showed you where the locations were gonna go from the watch folders well it's automatically looking at all of my data here and it's telling me well this is where this is located and this is where that's located your you know videos your photos your audio if you got any missing media all that jazz it's all here so i can go through here i can remove stuff i can do a lot of stuff with it so if i go here to photos you'll see if i click on photos then all it's going to do really is show all the photos that i have in that location on my hard drive same thing with all these other settings now one thing that's different on here from before is that we now got some little colors off to the side you know so the colors are brand new you got blue for your media then you got purple for your projects you got green for any type of collections that you put together you know i got my little collections here i got action essentials holtz effects sports uh, shootout pack got all that good jazz and then all your content like your transitions your effects titles and all of that jazz is all here and the color for this is yellow so basically they put these colors here to help you you know kind of get a a grouping of all of the different things so it just makes it kind of cleaner so you know exactly where you're at and what you're doing so we jump back over to the edit tab you'll see here that in the edit tab this is where you're gonna have all your magic all your magic happens here baby okay so basically there's a few there's a lot of different things that you can do with this i mean right now looking at it you see there's no nothing in my video clip it's just all sitting here looking all beautiful and stuff 
Now, I'm going to go back and do a little change here. And if I want to change something that, if I'm on this tab that says photo and I want to change it, I just hover over this navigation and boom, I can go in here and say, wow, all right, let's change this up. I don't want photos. I don't want to look at photos. I want to look at uh, my digital juice renders that are saved on my hard drive. Blah, damn. I'm there. Really easy to navigate to different things. You can add new tabs in by clicking on the new tab button and then you'll have more media to look at. You can close them out by hitting a little X. Make it easy on yourself. So also, in the area where you have your media, you have the option to see a thumbnail view or you can see a detail view where it's just going to show you all the data about each file and the name of it. All right. Now over here to the right, you got your preview window. Your wonderful preview show up right here. So if I click on, let's say, this little clip and I bring it, drag it down the timeline, and then I have this little clipper and I click on this one well now it's going to automatically change to the source so the source are the clips that you click on within the media area and the timeline of course is what you got in the timeline so you can switch between the two pretty easily and if you want to do some nice little trimming and things like that i really think that you should bam click on this button here so now i got my source and my timeline here pretty dang easy now let's say i wanted to do something i want to trim this source clip up i don't want it to be this long i want it to be nice and little shorty so i'm gonna make it smaller by trimming the front and the back side and i'm just gonna say i'm gonna move my playhead to the end of this clip here and i'm gonna say send this to the timeline and it did now look how little that is well if i went to the original and drag that down that's the original size all right, so you can trim things right in your source preview window and then drag that sucker down into the timeline and say, uh, got you, boy. So it's really good. And then you could do in and outs on these. It's, it's pretty, pretty nice little feature that they have here. Let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and bring this back to just the one window. So now I'm in the timeline view. All right. Pretty nice, don't you agree? Now, let's go to some of these other icons on here. So you got your customized toolbar. If you want to change up all the stuff in this toolbar here, click on this. It's going to say, what do you want to see and what do you want to take out of the toolbar? All right, it's pretty nifty. If there's things in there you don't use a lot or you feel it's cluttered up, just go ahead and click on that and make some changes. Then you go ahead and click on your lovely timeline settings. So I got mine in uh, 16 by 9, 2D, 1920 by 1080. You can change all of this, baby. So you can make your timeline settings where you want them to be. Get them set up right before you even go to export. All right. So then we got our lovely uh, timeline view or our, I uh, can't remember the name of it right now. Right on the tip of my tongue, I think it's called storyboard view. Click on that. Bam. I'm in storyboard view now. Storyboard view just shows you the clip up on the top and then below it you actually have the timeline view as well so you can see both if you wish to do so let me get out of here i like timeline all right so let me go ahead and get rid of this little bad boy just click on the little orange timeline and bam you get rid of the little storyboard thing all together you don't got to see any of that all right it's no need all right so then you got your audio mixer so you want to change up your sound Get it stereonic, phonic, and change up your decibels and all of that. This is where you go to do it. Got your score fitter. So if you want to add some music or whatever, you can go ahead and click on score fitter. Get fitted up. Get all your info here. You know how it goes down with the score fitter. You can go ahead and actually take songs and make them match the length of your produced movie. So it's cool way to go ahead and get some nice little musica going on with your video then you got your title tool so if you select a track click on the title editor it will add a title to your timeline right where the scrubber is and then you can go ahead and do your title get downs All right and then you got your narration or voiceover so if you want to go ahead and activate that you click on it and boom it's going to say Hey, buddy, you ready to record? Let's get some music going. And then you got your um, 
your settings you could tell where your volume is so it's not peaking or anything like that so you could go there close that out all right you got your split your delete your uh, capture snapshot you got your timeline markers all that graviness you got your trim mode you got your dynamic length transition magnets you got your uh, volume keyframing ability and then you also got your audio scrub and then you got your smart editing mode so if you're not familiar with those you can read up on them pretty great information on them now author tab you go over to the author tab it's gonna say do you want to create a disc project and eh, i might as well say yes and then what's gonna happen is gonna pop up some good loveliness here and it's gonna give you the ability to create a disc from your project that you have in the timeline all these great menu options here that are available to you. Look at the plethora of menus. The plethora of menus. Plethora. All right. I'm not going to do that right now, but it is a great tool to create your, your disc. Now, let's go back to the edit tab real quick. First and foremost, if I right click on something in the timeline, I got some options here. I got speed. If I want to change the speed, fast or slow, I can scale it. I can go ahead and see what streams are active right now. I can deactivate those streams. I can adjust the duration. I can find a library. All this stuff's pretty self-explanatory. But then, of course, we got our open effects editor. So let's open up the effects editor. Let's get a look at some of the options we have here. So in Pinnacle Studio 17, pretty much the same as Pinnacle Studio 16. You got your 2D, 3D, which has a bunch of great different effects. If you kind of put your cursor over them, you can get an idea of what those effects are. You got a little arrow here. You click on that, it'll show you more. Uh, you got your camera effects where you got your invert, magnify. You got your old film. You got radio blur. You got all kind of great stuff. Rotate. And you got your color so you can do some color correction, auto color correction, brightness, color mapping, shifting channels, white balance, all that good stuff. You got your luma kia, chroma kia, and transparency. Uh, under the keyers options then under artistic you got some uh, fractal fire hall of mirrors all kind of good stuff on here as well you can see that the effects are um loaded shall we say then if you got your stereoscopic 3d you got 3d thing going on you want to make yourself a little 3d video then you got your add-ons this is where some of the uh more professional effects are at if you go to add-on uh i've got some of my own filters in here and my own add-ons and plugins the filter is actually a uh, Boris Graffiti. So if you don't know how to transfer over your plugins to new versions of Pinnacle Studio, you got to get up on my YouTube video, transferring plugins to Pinnacle Studio 16. It'll tell you how to transfer your plugins to Pinnacle Studio 17 as well. All right. Uh, so that's one. And then we got a uh, new blue things that I have in here. And then I got my Pro Dad. Now, all of these that I'm showing you right now are ones that I have on here that you won't have unless you transfer them over from a previous version or unless you um, buy them. And then I got a little red giant here. This is the Tune It and 3D Stroke, the ones that came with like Pinnacle Studio 14 and 15, but don't come with 16 and don't come with 17. So I transferred them over into 17 so I can still use them. Now, the next two are the ones that come with Pinnacle Studio 17 Ultimate. So if you have Ultimate, you'll get the Red Giant Filmmaker Toolkit. If you click on that, you see that you got Cosmo. Cosmo is for, uh, I guess, cleaning up skin tones and blemishes and things like that. Magic Bullet Looks is a great, a great software for different types of uh, filters, for different types of looks for your movies. And then Mojo is a uh, color grading uh, software which actually helps you do some uh, color grading for your movies after you do your color correction. And then you got the other one that comes with it is Red Giant Motion Graphics Toolkit. And that includes uh, Red Giant No Light Factory for some great flares and other light effects. Uh, particular, where you can go ahead and create all types of great particle effects. You got Reflect, if you want to get your reflection on. It's actually part of the, I guess, program called uh, Red Giant Warp. And then Shadows, which is also part of Red Giant Warp. You can add shadows to things. And then you got Shine, where you can get your light on. Your light, make it bright and crazy and tight. 
And that's all your good love in this day. Now, also remember, you got your solo button down here. So whenever you want to see a video and a track below, I always tell you, click on the solo button. All right. Click on it, and it'll give you the option to show media and tracks below. So if you're adding transparency, you're adding effect on top of something else or a PNG image, it is crucial that you use this so that you can see everything just like you see it in the timeline. If you don't, it's just going to show the clip that you uh, right-clicked on to get to the effects editor. Let's get out of here. All right. So let's go ahead and check out Import tab. If I click on the Import tab, you're going to get the Studio Importer. So it's going to say, hey, where are you going to import from? I see some devices hooked up to here. I see a Logitech a webcam. Uh, you got a Blu-ray, you know, you can go from the cloud and import things from the cloud. If you want to do some stop motion animation and you have a um, device like a Dazzle or a capture device, and you can do that as long as it's hooked up to a device that uh, Pinnacle Studio 17 will uh, recognize. And you can take sh snapshots of your clips and things like that. Now, also you got different modes. You got uh, copy, so copy the files over and then link you're linking to it so that you'll be able to get to it later on as well uh, you can add metadata for the file the tag or a name for a certain collection it'll go ahead and pop it in here as a collection of uh, media files so it's a pretty cool easy tool to use I freaking love it you should do let's close that out all right let's jump on over to the export tab see what's going on over here all right, so in the export tab, you got several options. You got file, you can export to a disk, the cloud, or a device. And when you click on each one of these, you get different settings. So you got a uh, MPEG 4, you got all these beautiful settings in here, and then you got you know your sub settings on here for different types of things. If you go to disk, you're going to get the same thing, you get different settings here, and depending on which one you choose, you get different sub settings as well. If you want to go to the cloud, you know, you got Box, Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube. So if I go to device, I got different options like uh, Apple devices. So I can choose from several different Apple devices. If I go to Microsoft Xbox One, I can choose the f file type here. And then you got all your other devices here as well. Now, there is a new function called Smart Rendering. Now, what this does is it renders stuff real freaking fast, all right? But it'll only do it if you have files that match the uh, settings that you need to be able to do that in. So it seems to me like it's best for uh, AVC uh, HD files that are in the H.264 format. So if you go to File and then you go to the Type here, if you have a H dot uh, AVC HD, that's an H dot two six four file in the timeline, and if all your files in the timeline fit that, then it'll go ahead and give you the option to do smart rendering. And you have to also use a preset that is a uh, HD. All right, so just to let you know, if you didn't know. Pinnacle Studio 17 also comes with a few little add-ons that are separate from Pinnacle Studio 17. You'll notice that if you go to the Start or Windows or wherever on your, whether you use Windows 8, Windows 7, whatever, if you go to All Programs, and when you first uh, download it, you'll see that uh, program called Isotope pops up, and it, you know asks you for like the serial number and all of that. Well, Isotope is a music and speech cleaner. So if you click on it, you'll get the option. It'll pop up here. And if you have like music or any audio and stuff and you want to clean it up, you can use this to clean up your sound, your audio. So it's pretty dang cool that they gave you this uh, separate little application to use. Now, another application that you might not be aware of because when you download it and you... Uh, Install it on your computer. It's not. It is going to give you a message about the isotope, but it's not going to give you a message about the next thing I'm going to show you. So if I go to my start or my Windows or whatever, like I said, you got on your computer, 
and you go to Pinnacle Studio 17, you'll see there is something called live screen capturing. So if you click on live screen capturing, you get a little screen capture thing pops up on the screen. Ain't that lovely. So now you can go ahead and do tutorials like your boy if you want to, okay? So you had different options here. You got full screen. You can do custom. Uh, you got the different things that are showing up right now on your monitor. So it'll tell you everything that all the windows that you got on your monitor. It's like, which one of these stinking things do you want to record, buddy? Then you got the option to change the settings for the uh, size of your monitor, what it's recording. You got settings here. So you got your file name, where you're going to save it to on your computer, the frame rate that you want to use. Uh, let's see. Your voice. So it's telling you, oh, we got voice recording on. If you want your system audio on or off, you can do sound checks on here. Uh, mouse animation. So whenever you click your mouse, it'll give you a little animation so everybody knows that you clicked your mouse. And then your F10 and F11 shortcut key is usually to stop recording. And then which monitor you're going to record, the primary or the secondary. So it's cool that you got that little screen capture joint going on in your life, baby. I like it a lot. You getting some video love, all right? You guys know the routine. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Comments. You know me and comments get together better than a rubber band and some socks with no elastic, baby. Leave them, all right? I need you to leave your comments. Leave me your questions. I always get back to you. If I can't help you with something, I'll point you in the right direction. Get you the help you freaking deserve. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.